Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today, I want to read one of those popular scriptures um, in the book of Mark. And we'll, we'll, we'll dig in deep and mine for gold from what our Lord Jesus taught. Join me in the book of Mark chapter 9 from verses 14. I'm reading from the Amplified. And when they came to the nine disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes questioning and disputing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw Jesus returning from the holy mount, his face and person yet glistening, they were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, About what are you questioning and discussing with them? And one of the throng replied to him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a dumb spirit. So this was, the, the man came seeking for Jesus, for help for his son. But unfortunately at that point in time, Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he met with the disciples only. And uh, verse 18, And wherever it lays hold of him, so basically, he says he has a dumb spirit, a spirit that causes him not to be able to speak. And wherever it lays hold of him so as to make him its own, it dashes him down and convulses him. And he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth. And he falls into a motionless stupor and is wasting away. And I asked your disciples to drive it out and they were not able to do it. Note, he says, he, and he falls into a motionless stupor and is wasting away. So, Take note of that statement. When the thing grabs him, it makes him fall, convulse, and then go into a motionless stupor. And he says, And I asked your disciples to drive it out, and they were not able to do it. So it means that the disciples tried, and they couldn't cast out this devil, according to this man. And the disciples didn't dispute it. For if they actually disputed it, they would have, uh, you, we would have had record of that. Verse 19, And he answered them, O unbelieving generation, without any faith, how long shall I have to do with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. It's, you see, Jesus was a very loving, loving teacher. Yes, his uh, fellows had met with failure. But their failure would not uh, stop him from helping this man and his son. So they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, at once it completely convulsed the boy. So what did the spirit see in him that it now convulsed the boy? The Bible says when the spirit saw him, not when the boy saw him, when the spirit saw him. So it was a thing that was troubling the boy that... Uh, took note of Jesus and at once it completely convulsed the boy and he fell to the ground and kept rolling about foaming at the mouth and Jesus asked the father how long has he had this and he answered from the time he was a little boy and it has often thrown him up thrown him both into fire and into water intending to kill him but if you can do anything do have pity on us and help us. This was a funny child. You brought the boy to Jesus for Jesus to heal him. Uh, yes, unfortunately, the disciples uh, proved inadequate in your estimation. Then you've eventually gotten to the master. And you now say if you can do anything. That is, you are querying the master's ability to do it. In essence, you, didn't, you do not have confidence that he can do it. You just came to try. And Jesus said, You said to me, if you can do anything, why? All things can be, are possible to him who believes. In essence, that's your question is very, very obtuse. It's not, it's not a question of my ability. It's a question of can you believe? If you can believe that I'll get it done. I'll get it done. But if you don't have any confidence in me, don't waste your time. At once, the father of the boy gave an eager, piercing, inarticulate cry with tears. 
And he said, Lord, I believe or I have confidence in you. Constantly help my weakness of faith. But when Jesus noticed that a crowd of people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit. How did he rebuke the unclean spirit? He didn't say, I rebuke you. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it. Now listen to the rebuke. You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you to come out of him. And he didn't stop it there. As he charged it to come out of him, he locked the door. He says, I charge you to come out of him and never go into him again. That was finality. It's the same way like further down in Mark 11, 20, uh, Mark 11, I think that was verse 15, where he cursed the fig tree. He says, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forevermore. That is tantamount to locking the door. He finalized it. He didn't give the opportunity for it to make a comeback. He says, I never go into him again. Learn a lesson from that. When you deal with that crafty one, lock the door behind him. When you kick him out, lock the door. Don't give him the opportunity. He's a crafty one. So lock the door behind him. And after giving a hoarse, clamoring, fear-stricken shriek of anguish and convulsing him terribly, it came out. Of course, it has to come out. And the boy lay pale and motionless like a corpse. You remember when I told you to take note of something? Let me read it again to you. Uh, where was that? When the father was describing, he says, and in verse 18, and he falls into a motionless stupor and is wasting away. So this was that the trick of that uh, funny demon. As it convulsed the boy, as Jesus told him to get out, he made him lie down in a motionless stupor. So that many of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took a strong grip of his hand and began lifting him up and he stood. Many Bible scholars have said that this is exactly the same thing that happened when the disciples tried to cast out that devil. And when they saw him as if he was dead, they panicked. Doubt came in and that demon had the opportunity to get back in or stand its ground. It had fooled them, caused them to walk based on what they could see and not based on uh, what they believed. So they were walking by sight and not by faith. Here Jesus was showing that he walks by faith and not by sight. He had give, issued the command of faith and it had to be exactly as he said it. So as the thing was trying to show, give signs to the contrary, negative signs, he wasn't bothered. He had issued that command of faith. So this child, as far as he was concerned, was healed. So he gripped him and stood him up. How can you lie down as if you are dead? Come on, stand up there. And the boy was healed. God bless you. Hallelujah.